Hey everybody, today I want to just redo the video that we've done multiple times. Everybody's been asking for an updated pricing video. So again, we just got back from training about a week ago. Before that it was Vegas. It's been a very hectic winter. Um, we have so much cool stuff happening. Um, EcoFinish is coming down to the second pool in Dolphin Island to work through the finish process with us um, as they are getting very close to some you know, official answers that I, then I can actually start talking more about, um, ICF pools and eco finish, which is like kind of the creme de la creme of pool building. And a lot of you guys, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you guys in person about it at training and everything else, but I can't really go online to the masses. I think that's just a few weeks away now, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to do an update video next week about all my little random ICF projects, uh, in my backyard here, my pool, the, the she shed, my garage, the master bedroom. Everybody's been asking where that's at. Um, I've been gone most of the winter, been down in Alabama. So now it's uh, kind of getting closer. And we're also gonna be wrapping up a couple pools that go back to last uh, last summer that were kind of fancy builds. But the weather's been too poor to um, deal with over the last couple months. It's been a pretty, pretty rough winter for the second year in a row in uh, in Missouri. So if you guys um, have watched a lot of my videos, you know that we do kind of a series and it's a, it's a rudimentary um, metric, if you will. Um, you know, most people talk about lumber futures, this and that. And a lumber future is based on 100 board feet of random dimensional lumber, which is a good metric. It's good to see where it is today and yesterday and tomorrow, but it's not overly helpful to tell you what a two by six is gonna cost delivered to your job site. Just like a lot of people randomly throw an ICF square footage around, isn't doing that either. So um, what we've done in the past, going back to March of 2020, I think, is um, or 21, is um, we, we take a 4x8 sheet of zip board um, with 2x6 framing, spray foam insulation, and we price out all the components of that. That is the only way to bring a lumber project up anywhere close to ICF. It's not remotely equal, but it's at least close, the closest you can get thermally without talking about SIP panels, which are more expensive anyway. Um, so we take that versus four foot by eight foot of ICF full of concrete. Um, we've done that about once a quarter for the last two years. Um, and it's been kind of eye-opening. There were times in the last two summers when lumber had gotten so out of whack, so high that it didn't even make sense, um, that for a while ICF walls could be done as inexpensive or as expensive as um, framing, in which at that point, I mean, the whole point of using lumber is because it's cheaper. I mean, that has to be the, the thought process because it definitely does not last as long and it's definitely not as thermally efficient, structurally sound, it's just not as good on any level, so it has to be significantly cheaper or why does it exist? Um, and for a little while it wasn't. And I think that's when a lot of people got really on the, on the bus with ICF. They were like, hey, this makes a lot of sense. It always makes sense on some level, but for a while it was just a no-brainer. And so during that period of time, obviously these videos were pretty popular because everyone was like, holy crap, if that's even half true, why aren't we doing this? Which I would be like, yeah, no, no joke. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do today is kind of just review. I can't go back and hit every single video and what the prices were. You can go back and check them. I'm going to make them a playlist. So if you like this video, um, you can see the other ones in the series, if you will. Um, so you can kind of go back to the very first one and go from there. So pre COVID you had to think about, um, Lumber futures were in the mid 300s, okay, um, like 340, 350 dollars for a hundred board feet of random dimensional lumber. At the height, that got up to 1720 dollars per uh, hundred random board feet of random dimensional lumber. Um, right now, today, it's at 762. Um, we've we've seen it down in the sixes. It'll go up back towards a thousand. Um, you know, right now it's basically double where it was before COVID and we've doubled the money supply that, um, you know, existed before COVID. So I don't know that that's necessarily anything but just inflation or, you know, 
just baked into the cake at this point. It seems like everybody talks about lumber tanking, but it's still about twice what it was, you know, in January of 2020. So I don't know that we'll ever see anything way below that unless things just crash, which obviously we don't want. Um, so, you know, you're probably looking at um, about where it's going to be. And a lot of, and you'll see in a second, compared to where it's been, we're down considerably lower. So the four by eight sheet of, um, you know, of, of zip board framed takes five studs. This is very rudimentary guys, you know, four on 16 inch centers and one for the plates. So it takes five, two by six, eight footers at the highest point. They were around $15 per two by six, which, you know, for a guy who's been building for 20 years, that's almost mind numbingly aggravating right now. They're at $7, you know, you used to pay three bucks a piece for those things, but you know, I'm not going to be a grandpa talking about, you know, the way things used to be. They're seven bucks a piece. Now it's a lot better than it was. Zip board was anything. Um, sheet goods was what really got out of whack. That really made things ridiculous. Regular OSB was up over $50 a sheet for a while, which is insane. But zip at its highest, was $73, $74 a sheet. You guys can remember me being almost queasy to, to say those words, um, you know, because I'd been paying under $20 a sheet most of my life. Now it's at $25.55 today at Home Depot. You know, it's not bad actually um, for where, you know, we were used to it. Tape has always been around 30 bucks a sheet, anywhere from 25 to low 30s. It went up to like 42 that one summer where everything was completely nuts. It's back at $32 a, uh, a roll now. We factor in uh, one roll will do about six sheets. Um, it'll actually do eight sheets, but by the time you tape up windows and doors, you're probably going to get five to six sheets of yield out of a roll. So that's how we uh, kind of the multiplier we use to average this out. The big problem with stick framing and trying to get to the same or close to the same insulation value is you need to do spray foam. Spray foam got really out of whack. It's a resin based product. Resins have gone out, you know, wacky. They really haven't gone down much. Um, so I actually, at my last training down in Dolphin, uh, one of our buddies who had been to our very first training a, a year ago, dropped in for a couple days, kind of looking at what we're doing. And he's a spray foam guy in Tennessee. That's his main trade. And I just said, is it getting any better? And he goes, nope. He goes, it's still completely insane. And I mean, he's a guy who does it. So, you know, he goes, it's just hard to stomach doubling your price on your customers in a few months and then having to stay there. So, you know, it used to be about $1.65 a square foot for quality spray foam guys. Now it's upwards 285, some, some places higher than that. So when you factor in the insulation to two by sixes and zip, you're about $161 for that four by eight sheet. Um, so it's about where it was a couple years ago, basically because the insulation has gone up so much. Um, ICF in that time didn't go up and down like a roller coaster, but it did go up. Concrete went up, ICF went up about 20%. So right now you're basically exactly where you've been. You're at about $5 a square foot delivered to your job site for ICF. And we're going to factor in about $150 a yard. I know, you know, my angel fire project, we're looking at $200 a yard. I talked to a few guys that are still down in the mid 130s. We're going to average 150 a yard to be fair, to be as, you know, equal as we can be. So you're looking for a four by eight piece of this with, you know, 0.59 yards and a six inch wall plus the uh, ICF. You're at about $240 for that same thing. So you're about 78, $79 more or 30% more for the same wall volume. Um, you know, that'll correlate into, you know, on a normal 2,500 square foot house, you know, somewhere between 10 and $15,000 difference from this to framing. The quality differences are this is going to be 200, 250 mile an hour wind rated. Um, you're going to really struggle to get wood to 150 mile an hour wind rating. Normal framing doesn't get you beyond probably 130, 135. So if you're in a tornado zone, this is a no brainer for that. Also, you know, this performs better on a thermal mass. You know, you'll, your R values are not overly important. You can get really good R values out of bat insulation, but it doesn't seal your house up. Spray foam and ICF do a much, much better job of sealing. But framing still gives you 
thermal bridging. I'll link a video here that gets into why thermal bridging is such a big deal. On a normal 250 linear foot house, you'll have 15 to 20 feet of studs stacked up there, which basically means you got 15 or 20 feet of your wall that's not insulated with anything but wood. So no matter what you're spending on spray foam and everything else, ICF gives you a 100% um, no thermal bridging, which is massive when it comes to efficiency. That's why this outshines spray foam and everything else. So there's a big, big quality difference, obviously. And again, in that 10 or 15,000 that you're going to spend extra on your four to $500,000 house, um, you can look at it in multiple ways. How long does it take to save that in utilities? Somewhere around three years is the um, common assumption. Kind of depends on if you live in Phoenix or, you know, North Dakota, I guess. You know, it just depends on what you pay per kilowatt hour. But it also, um, and a way I've always put it, and interest rates are kind of changing that um, thought process a little bit. If you have an extra $15,000 on your mortgage because you win ICF instead of something else, your utilities may be down by, you know, depending on the size of the house and everything else, somewhere between 75 and 150 a month lower on the utility bill. Um, obviously, that's baked into the cake forever. You never get to pay that bill off, so that's a savings that goes on forever. But if you when the interest rate was 3%, you know, maybe your bill is only up by, you know, 40 or $50 a month and your utility bill is down by a hundred, you're actually saving money on your monthly nut, you know, utilities and your mortgage. Now with interest, you know, at five and a half, six on a good mortgage, um, those rates, uh, I confirmed with a friend of mine that does mortgages up in New England today that those are still gettable. I know that, you know, construction loans are up in the mid sevens and commercial loans, but you can still get mortgages under six. So now you're at $65, $75 a month extra in that, you know, mortgage, but that still gives you basically even to saving money somewhere in that range if you factor in your utility bill. Um, there's several insurance companies. I actually get to go speak to, I think, Farmers Insurance here in a couple months to a big conference they're having about, you know, why these houses, you know, there's, they've, they've got fire ratings, everything else that, you know, wood frame houses don't have. They have such lower loss risk, they should be saving you more money than they are. So their actuaries are actually starting to pay attention to that. You know, you do get some savings, but the savings I think is going to start being a lot more across the board with insurance. But um, that's not really, we don't want to get into hour long video talking about those details. Really, we just wanted to get into an update of our old metric of, you know, four foot by eight foot of this you know, versus, versus, you know, zip board. So, um, yeah, it's, it's back where it ought to be guys, you know, maybe exterior walls, you know, 20 or 30% more. So the overall cost of your house, you know, somewhere between two to 5% more, depending on how simple your house design is. Um, you know, because your framing comes down, your you would completely replace your, um, wall guys, your stem wall guys, which, Honestly, those guys got, their labor got very in demand, so they were able to charge a premium for the last several years. Um, and housing's slowing down, but, you know, the demand is coming down, which is probably good to just stabilize everything, but it's not tanking by any stretch. I mean, interest rates are still in a historically reasonable place, so people who want to build are still absolutely building. There's still a lot of specs going on. But anyway, I just wanted to, you know, kind of hit this up. Very excited about all the content I'm going to be bringing you, whether it be here Back down in Dolphin, I think when we get the second pool done, we're going to do an all-out tour video of the whole property. Um, and um, after that after that trip, we will also have some really good answers on EcoFinish. So that's, I know, a ton of you guys are waiting for that. Um, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out for today. I will see you guys next week. And uh, looking forward to all the new videos we got coming real soon.